I found my husband and sister together. I, 40 female, and my husband, 42 male, have been married since I was 22 and he was 23. Up until now our marriage has been perfect. We have a 12-year-old daughter and a 14-year-old son together, but lately I have been getting this weird feeling that my husband is in love with my sister. For short context my sister, 43 female, has always hated me, even though she was our parents' favorite growing up she just had the hate for me and always took away things like I loved like for example when I was younger I loved playing soccer and was good at it. When my sister found out she also started playing soccer she was good but not better than me. Not to brag, one day she injured her ankles and was told she couldn't play soccer for a long time and somehow it was my fault. She told our parents and being their favorite angle they believed her and banned me from playing soccer ever again. She also stole my first boyfriend and bullied me in school but I never said anything and mostly kept to myself. Back to now. I had the feeling that my husband was in love with my sister because when she and her husband got divorced she called up my husband immediately and he went without a second thought, that's how it has always been whenever she needs him, he's there with her without even a second thought, about two months ago our 12 year old daughter broke her arm and we went to the hospital with both me and my husband while my son was at his friend's place, we got home and my daughter asked if she could get McDonald's and so I went out to get our daughter some McDonald's because she wanted it and she also wanted her dad to stay with her, she has always been a daddy's girl. When I came back home I found my husband on his way out with our daughter crying and begging him to stay. When I saw it I quickly rushed over and asked what was happening and I found out he was going to my sister because she wasn't feeling well. And I asked him why was he going there when his daughter literally just broke her arm and he only answers your sister needs me and left. After that I got super angry and packed a bag for me, my daughter and my son and went to stay at my aunt's place. She was the only one of my family that agreed that my sister was a brat so I spent most of my childhood with her. Two days after I had to go back home because I forgot my work computer and when I got there I was shocked at what I saw. My husband and my sister were on the couch of our family home doing the dirty work. When they both noticed me they were quick to get their clothes back on and my husband ran to me telling me that this wasn't what it looked like and that this was all a misunderstanding. I stood there for a minute because I yelled back at him how he could have done this to me and if I meant nothing to him and I yelled that I wanted divorce and left. When I got to my aunt's place I went into the room I was staying in and broke down crying. I don't know what to do. I already told my aunt and she is furious. She told our parents and most of our family members even though I asked her not to but at the same time I'm happy she told them because I don't have the courage to do so. My husband and sister have been blowing up my phone with text messages but I just ignore them. I don't know how I'm gonna tell my kids. What do I do? Update 1. One side of me felt sad and wanted to forgive my husband for the kid's sake but the other side felt anger and wanted revenge. I told my kids that things aren't working well at work. That was the reason for my sadness which they believed I was glad because I still can't bring myself to tell them about their father. One thing I didn't mention in the other post was that my sister and her ex-husband, super hot husband and such a nice person, I'm so sorry but it's the truth, got divorced because she had been mentally abusing him throughout their whole relationship and she had just started physically abusing him and that's when enough was enough for him and he divorced her, being the person that she is. She made a lie about how her husband was the one doing the abuse and all that bull crap. I contacted her ex-husband to have a talk with him and I asked if he wanted revenge. He agreed and we made plans to meet up. We met up at a public cafe and talked together. We talked about how abusive she was and how he too had the feeling that she had feelings for my husband. I also told him what I saw and we decided to start with our revenge plan. We started with reporting my sister to the police for the abuse and at first the officer was skeptical but she had left a bruise on him and he also had texts from her threatening him. They told us they were going to start on the case and advised us to get a lawyer and send us home. After that I started with taking out all the money we had on our shared account to my own and since I owned the house I was going to kick him out. I then got a lawyer and started the divorce process which I knew was going to be a long and hard battle but I was willing to do anything to get away from this disgusting man. Later that week I sat my kids down and told them everything. My son was furious, but my daughter didn't believe me at all and told me I was lying and I told her that even though she might think I'm lying I am not going to stop her from seeing her dad. Later that day my aunt had gathered my parents and my husband's parents together with the both of them at her house and I didn't know. I just got home from work to find them all there. Turns out my aunt finally had enough of my sister and told the whole family of what I had seen and also that my sister had been in and out of jail and my aunt was the one to bail her out each time. My parents were furious and started yelling about how much of a disappointment she was and my mom gave her a tight slap and told her they never wanted to see her ever again. As for my husband's parents, they told him they never thought he could go that low knowing his mom raised him as a single mom before she met his stepdad who he called dad. My daughter stood up and yelled at her dad telling him how much she hates him and never wants to see him again before she ran up into the room she and her brother were sharing at my aunt's house and slammed the door after herself. My son gave him a disappointed look and followed his sister upstairs. My husband kneeled in front of me and begged for forgiveness and I told him he had two days to pack his things and leave the house or else I'll call the cops and he started sobbing and begged me saying he had nowhere else to go. His parents told him he wasn't welcome ever again in their house never ever. I told him I didn't care and that I wanted a divorce and at the end he said okay and left with red teary eyes. Two days later I went home with my babies. They hadn't been to school since that talk and were having a hard time, especially my daughter. I sat them down and held them both in my arms telling them we were strong and we're gonna get through this no matter what, I'll always be there for them, 
They both broke down crying until they fell asleep. I woke them up to take them in their bed and went downstairs and had a breakdown myself. I could never show my kids how hard this was on me. I had to be strong for them. I heard the doorbell ring and thought it was my ex-husband but it was my sister's ex-husband who came to visit. He sat me down and hugged him while I cried telling him I couldn't do this on my own. He stayed the night and when I woke up he had made breakfast for me and my kids and they seemed to enjoy him being here. He asked the kids if they wanted to go somewhere special with him and they both gave him a shrug. I was about to tell him it's okay but he talked the kids into it and they finally agreed running to their rooms to get ready. I gave him a big hug and told him thank you and he hugged me back telling me to take all the time I needed. For any confusion they have always been close with Thomas, my sister's ex. When they left I called up my lawyer and had a chat before meeting him. When I got home I almost started crying at what I saw. I saw that Thomas had ordered their favorite takeout and was sitting on the sofa eating it while my daughter was cuddled up on his side, eyes red from crying. I quietly got my shoes and jacket off before making my way into the living room with a huge smile on my face. My son ran up to me and gave me a big hug before we sat down and enjoyed our night together. I had a talk with my kids and they agreed that we all should start seeing a therapist. Thomas helped talk them into it because he was also seeing one himself. My husband has been blowing up my phone with texts and calls but I just blocked him. That's all I have. I'll update if anything happens and my kids haven't talked to their dad since. And I also cut off my parents. And I also got tested for STD and was STD free. Again thank you guys for the love and support. My wife and her best friend accused me of having an affair, then got angry when I didn't have one. I 31 male and my wife 29 female had a baby last December. It was a traumatic birth and my wife developed postpartum depression. While she was originally going to go back to work after the birth, she's been struggling enough that we decided to wait until our daughter was a year old and reassess. She has been going to therapy weekly, with my wife home full time. I've had to work increased hours. This is something we discussed prior to making this decision and she knew this from the start. A few weeks ago, my boss approached me about a project that would require a lot of overtime in a short amount of time. It would both be great financially and for my career. I talked to my wife about it and she agreed that I should say yes to my boss. For the four weeks I'd be working on this, my mother-in-law and her best friend Jesse, 29 female, would come help out with some of the duties that I typically do. Jesse is a stay-at-home mom with a four-year-old and a two-year-old. She began coming over during the day and would watch the kids with my wife, three weeks into the project. It became clear that we'd need a few more weeks to get it together. I went home that night and talked to my wife about it. She said she was okay with it, but got very cold in the days after. It was an unusual behavior over the past few months, so I didn't think much about it and tried not to take it personally. During the last week of the project, I got home one night and saw that Jessie was still at the house. I didn't think much about it, said hi to her and my wife, and then went to go check on our daughter. Before I could get to her room, I heard Jessie say something along the lines of, he doesn't even stop to greet you, definitely a sign. I turned around and asked what it was a sign of. Immediately, my wife started crying and Jessie started accusing me of having an affair. She told me that I must hate my wife because she has postpartum depression and I'm not attracted to her because she gained weight from the pregnancy. Neither of these things are true. I'm trying my best to help my wife through her postpartum depression while supporting our family. And I think she looks great how she is right now. She just hasn't wanted to have sex and I haven't pushed. Jessie then demanded to see my phone. I told her no. She told me that's a sign that I'm guilty. I told my wife that I would let her see my phone if she wanted to. She nodded and something inside me broke. I guess it was the thought that she actually believed I was having an affair really got to me, and that she didn't trust me after everything we've been through. Well, she looked through the phone and there was no evidence. Jessie started saying that I deleted the evidence. She started screaming and woke up our daughter, so I told her to get out of the house. Eventually, she left and I went to calm our daughter since my wife was still on the couch crying. When my daughter was asleep again, I sat down by my wife and tried to talk to her about what's been happening. She told me that she's been worried ever since I started working all the overtime. I told her that we'd talked about how good of an opportunity it was and she agreed to letting me take on this project. She said it was very suspicious to increase the length of the project. I told her that sometimes that happens, she wanted more evidence. So I showed her messages and emails with timestamps from work and pay stubs showing the overtime. She said she believed me and was sorry for doubting me. It was just that Jesse had been telling her that these were all signs that I was cheating. I asked her why she believed Jesse more than me, and why she didn't come to me with her concerns. She didn't have a real answer. It's been a couple weeks and the project is over. I actually scaled back and I'm trying to work a little less than I was before the project so I can spend more time with my wife and daughter. But I feel so burnt out trying to do everything and becoming resentful because in the back of my mind, I know that my wife doesn't trust me. I ask myself, what happens the next time I have a project, or I have to run errands one day, or if I have a business trip, am I going to come back every time to accusations that I'm cheating? I've tried bringing it up a couple times but my wife tells me it's not the time and that she's tired or sad. I try to be mindful of her feelings but I wonder if that means that I can never have any of my own. I'm not sure what to do here. Any advice for how I can move forward? Update. That night I approached my wife and told her that I was going to find a therapist. I didn't connect it to her accusations or anything. Just said that I was having a tough time and needed therapy. She shrugged and told me to do whatever. Next day, I got home from work and our room and my home office were ripped apart. Things everywhere. Important papers scattered. I don't see her but our daughter's in her room crying. My wife left her alone. Her cell phone's off. I call my in-laws and a few friends, but no one's seen her. I'm starting to get worried and I call my mom to see if she can babysit while I go out and look for her. Before my mom can get home, my wife gets back, Jesse's driving, 
Jesse doesn't come in, she hasn't been back in the house since I kicked her out because she was offended by my behavior, but my wife does, she's clearly upset, been crying, I ask what happened, I thought at first the house might have been robbed, she starts screaming at me that I'm being unfaithful and that the therapy is a front so I can meet my mistress, I try to calm her down and tell her that's not true, but she came at me and she whacked me, my nose is broken. She kind of realized what she did and sat down on the couch and went comatose, just stared at the wall, I went into my daughter's room and locked the door, called my mom to tell her what happened, she was already on her way, and my mother-in-law to ask her to come over and take care of my wife, I packed a bag for my daughter and when my mom got there, we left, my wife didn't even look up, we dropped my daughter off with my dad and then went to urgent care for my nose, I got blood all over my mom's new Subaru. My daughter and I are staying with my parents for a while and my wife staying with hers, I am looking into getting a restraining order against Jesse. my wife and I are separating, I love her but I won't live with someone who hurts me and who could potentially hurt our daughter, I am not going forward with a divorce yet, with the hopes that my wife will get the treatment she needs and we can work things out, my in-laws told me that they're looking at inpatient treatment at a local hospital, but I also have everything well documented in case of an eventual custody battle. My heart's broken because I know this isn't my wife, this is a sickness in her mind, but I need to keep myself and our daughter safe and give her the space to recover, I'm hoping that this is the right decision, thanks again everyone. Update 2, do I let the woman I fault with my wife's death let her speak at her funeral? My wife passed on early Monday morning, convinced by her friend Jesse that I was having an affair that I did not have, she had a mental break, which resulted in my taking our infant daughter and staying with my parents for a while, she was with her parents, who planned on taking her to the hospital for inpatient treatment on Monday. On Sunday night she came to my parents' house and demanded I give her our daughter, because she had left her alone for several hours the last time she was responsible for her and had gotten physical with me, I refused, I offered to let her come in and spend time with her while my parents and I were present, but she didn't want to come in and wanted to take our daughter with her, she was upset but left eventually, a few hours later, she drove her parents' car into a tree and passed away. The friend, Jesse, came to see my daughter and me yesterday, after some tears, she told me that she was planning to speak at my wife's funeral, she had already cleared it with my in-laws but was letting me know as a courtesy, I told her she would not be speaking at the funeral, we fought and she left after telling me that I was an asshole and not the only person who loved my wife. I talked to my in-laws who were adamant that Jesse be allowed to speak, she and my wife knew each other since they were kids and my in-laws are close to her, we're all very fragile right now and I fear that pushing this further would hurt my relationship with my in-laws, which I don't want, still, the thought of seeing Jesse up there at my wife's funeral makes me feel sick, I don't think I can stand to listen to her, knowing that she took joy in my wife's deteriorating mental health and picked up my wife, leaving my daughter home alone. That being said, I don't trust myself to make the best decisions right now, my mind's clouded by grief, guilt, and fear. My parents are split on what to do and I don't have the energy to reach out to my friends, so I'm coming here again to ask for your advice, thank you. My girlfriend left me because I took the life of a home intruder. I never thought my relationship would end because I had to defend my home from a burglar. It's still painful to write about this, and I have to admit, I'm still extremely upset about the entire situation. So, this happened several months ago, and I've waited for everything with the police to settle down. Fortunately, no charges were filed against me, but that's a minor relief. A bit of background, I moved back to the city where I grew up after graduating from school, ready to start my career. Through new friends and social gatherings, I met a woman I'll call Sarah. She was fantastic, smart, funny, and we had a ton in common. I eventually asked her to be my girlfriend, and she said yes. Sarah was everything I wanted in a partner, but she had an extreme dislike of violence due to some troubling experiences from her past. This didn't seem like an issue, even though I'm a hobbyist marksman and carry a firearm for personal security. Sarah knew all about this and assured me it wouldn't be a problem. Everything was going great until her landlord kicked her out of her apartment. I gladly offered her a place to stay with me in my house, which I shared with two housemates. This brings us to the night everything changed. We'd been living together a couple of months when I woke up one night to a loud banging on the door. The clock read 2.36 AM, and those numbers are now etched in my mind. I knew something was terribly wrong, so I told Sarah to lock herself in the bathroom and call the police. Then, I grabbed my firearm from the nightstand. Just a few seconds later, the door broke open, and I caught a glimpse of a man turning the corner in the hallway. My heart was pounding, but I knew I had to protect Sarah and myself. I blasted the intruder twice. He fell to the ground, gasping, and then he was gone. The police arrived about 15 minutes later, and their behavior was incredibly frustrating. They barged in, asking foolish questions, and seeming upset that I didn't tell them everything right away. After the coroner took away the intruder, I was left to clean the stains off the floor. It was a gruesome task, and the rest of the night was sleepless. In the following days, I struggled to come to terms with what happened. Although I felt no guilt over my actions, seeing the intruder as a threat rather than a person, the event shook me. Sarah was utterly distraught. She left to stay with her parents, and a few days later, she called me. After a long conversation, she told me she couldn't continue our relationship. The fact that I had unalived someone was too much for her to bear. I was devastated. It felt like I'd lost everything because of one terrible incident, one bad decision made by a stranger. My dreams of a future with Sarah were shattered. I even had plans to take her to the aquarium because she loved fish. All of that was gone. Now, I'm left picking up the pieces, trying to understand how life can change so suddenly. I understand why Sarah left, but it doesn't make the pain any less real.